Good morning everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Belinda here from Visualize DNZ. And I've got a fun little project for you today. I've been playing around with it this morning and I'm really keen to show you what I came up with. So firstly, let's talk about what we're going to need for this project. I am using these paint chips here. I've got this big stack. It's the type that are on a, like a ring or a post or something. Typically they're thinner than like a single paint chip that's on its own. So preferably looking for ones that are quite thin. And these, these really are quite thin cardstock. You can certainly do them with any shape or type of paint chip that you like. Whatever you have your hands on. If you don't have paint chips, if you can't take a run down to the local hardware store and pick up some, um, then just make yourself some bases out of scrapbook paper or cardstock or whatever you like. I'm sure you'll be able to come up with something even if you don't have your hand on paint chips. Now I was given this big stack. They are all neutrals, so white, grey, browny tones through to black. I've done a project with these before and it's been a while, so I'm going to do another one. We are making tags because obviously they make a perfect tag size and shape as is. My ones do, yours may look different and that's perfectly okay. I'm sure they will still work. Right, what else do we need? We need, so our paint chips and we need two per item that we're going to make. At least I do. If yours are thicker, you might go with one uh, per project. Um, it's up to you. Double sided tape. For me, this is an easy answer to what we're going to be working with, or what I'm working with. I'm working with foil chocolate wrappers. Again, if you don't have any of these to hand, you could use coloured cellophane, you could use tissue paper, you could just find some colourful scrapbook paper or magazine paper or whatever to do instead. It doesn't have to be what I'm using. You can substitute as you have uh, what you have available. I'm also going to be using a scrap of fabric, so I want it to be of a length, you know, reasonably long, so I can do strips of it to be tag toppers. I am going to be using craft punches today. Um, I'm using shapes, so I've got two different butterflies here, a larger one and a smaller one, different designs, all fine. I also grabbed out a star. Not sure if I'll use it or not, um, but I'll use those. And I think I'll also do one just using circles, just to show you you don't need to have all the fancy punches. You can just go with something quite simple like circles, and it's still going to be very effective. Okay, glue. We'll also need glue. Uh, probably a glue stick, maybe. Um, some scraps of... Whatever paper you like, I've just got some offcuts of some coffee dyed paper out of my scrap bag. So those, some word stamps, and I've gone for little word stamps here. Um, there's courage, serenity, grace, strength, etc. Um, I've gone for little ones because we haven't got a lot of room in between our punch shapes that we're going to be working with. I'm also going to use hole reinforcers. Again, you can make your own if you don't have them available, but I picked some up for on um, clearance at a shop that was selling closing down, uh, so I'm going to use them. Uh, anything else we need? Scissors, probably. Um, usual suspects. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's what I'm using. Whether I grab for anything else during the course of this, I don't know. Um, and you can... Of course, take this further and do it however you would like. You can add things, leave things out, substitute things. But I'm going to go ahead with my project. So I'm going to choose two paint chips and I'm going for a lighter and a darker one. Now, one thing I do recommend with your paint chips is test the lighter one and make sure it's writable. Uh, depending on what sort of surface it has, whether it's glossy or matte this is quite matte 
uh, whether you can write on it. So I did a test run and I wrote, you probably can't see, but I wrote in biro and it, it dried fine, it doesn't smear, so I'm good to go. If you don't have enough that you to, to do back to back, like so, uh, then just cover it with some scrap paper, like even this would, uh, yeah, it's about just about the exact right width actually so you could cover it with other paper but we're going to need to cover it towards the end not up front so don't go ahead and cover it now before we start making because you will run into issues so I'm going to put the lighter one aside for a moment because that's going to come down the track and I'm going to grab out my dark one and it's a bit beaten up and you know that's all good now grab a punch and I'm going to, first one I think I'm just going to do straight. And I'm going to punch straight into my paint chip. The bonus of this is you end up with some lovely little punched out shapes to use in other projects. So we're not actually using the shapes we're punching out today. We are just using the piece that we're cutting from. So just check that you don't run into the edge and cut the edge out. I'm going to do one up here. So maybe I'll just do three of the bigger butterfly. I did do a prototype of this and I did four of the bigger butterfly and three of the smaller. I'll show you at the end the one that I made that I practiced on. And just sort of vary the angle of your punch as much as possible. Uh, it's not always possible. I want maybe another one in here or in here mm, maybe one up the top I don't know no I'm gonna leave it I can always come back in well actually I can't really once I've done this I can't come back in and punch anymore but I'm sure it'll be fine so just do a random number and arrangement of your shapes whatever shapes you're using circles of course won't matter about angling it because they're going to be circle no matter which way you angle it so just put it straight in and punch right so I'm going to grab out a I like this one grab out a chocolate wrapper these ones are quite crinkly um, I'm going to try and give it a bit of a smooth out oh looks like I've got a bit of chocolate residue there these are left over from a community dinner. Um, so I'm just going to give that a bit of a clean. I don't want food residue in my project, even if it is chocolate. Okay, and give it a bit of a dry off because I need my tape to stick. Now, because I'm working with foil, I prefer to use double sided tape. I do not trust glue alone to hold foil down if you're using tissue or something then by all means just go in with glue a glue stick even would be fine um, and I like to just surround my cutout shapes with a bit of tape it's going to hold the foil nice and close in towards the design so as I um, whoops, I just tore a bit of the backing there which is fine so how are you this week, today? I hope you're all doing well. We're, um, we've got yet another fire. So in my video last week was it? Or a couple of weeks ago and I was telling you about hubby's, no it was a couple of weeks ago I think. Yeah it was. Hubby's um, coming home and had to divert because of a fire. Well there's another big one further away from us but kind of in between where he was coming from and the uh, the one that there was a couple of weeks ago and it's bigger um, it's more rural so it's not affecting like the main road or anything but there's a number of houses that have been evacuated farmhouses and things and um, it broke out last night and there's like 15 crews and five helicopters and a bulldozer and I'm just going to do a few at a time. 
um, here. Um, it's just crazy how many fires there are at the moment. And I'm just going to trim off bits that I don't might hang over the edge of my outside the edge of my tag. So I'm going to cut about there. Just crazy and quite worrying. I think we've had so many summers that haven't been that great. You know, they haven't been particularly hot and things haven't dried off like they used to. People have become quite lax, I think, and this summer is so dry and windy that people have been caught out by, you know, a cigarette butt or a glass bottle that's lying out somewhere that catches the sun and starts a fire or, you know, any of those types of things or just farming like the chainsawing and they hit a stone and it creates a spark or a tractor hits a stone and creates a spark you know it's just so dangerous out there right now for doing certain tasks but you can't blame a farmer for you know farming <laughs> he's, he's got to do he she um they have still got work to do they've still got paddocks to plow and paddocks to sow and animals to feed out and um, you know it's just just scary so I'm not sure yet how big this fire is in terms of hectares amount of area that it covers but it's fairly extensive so yes it's all all drama 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 and the poor fire crews are just the one in the Port Hills that's been going since last week, still not out. All right, so I'm just going to trim anywhere that it might show. And any excess that I don't need from around my punched shapes. Yeah, so that's, that's what's going on here. I woke up and that's the first thing I saw because I didn't know anything about it last night because it um, was like, at eight o'clock the fire alarm went here um and i thought oh yeah didn't go very long it was like oh yeah it's it's either a fire or an accident or something it's becoming so commonplace but then i woke up this morning and saw on facebook that there's this big fire um it's just like really and they're still battling others and so some of these fires there have now been property lost like they've been houses there's been a church that's been destroyed. Um, it's just, yeah, just not great. Not great at all. But it is what it is. And, you know, there's still questions over whether some of them might be deliberately done. Every fire is, of course, investigated. Uh, most of them, I suspect, are just like accidents. But the Port Hills fire, so the Port Hills is in Christchurch. Uh, seven years ago, they had a big fire through there. So they're only really just recovering from that. And some people who had their house destroyed have only just had it rebuilt and moved back in to be evacuated again for this fire. But that one seven years ago was actually caused by a couple of kids. Um, you know, kids just being silly, not realising the, the harm that they can cause. So every fire is, of course, investigated to make sure it's not being deliberate. I don't know if anything happened with the kids. I doubt it because, you know, they, they just don't realise the seriousness of what they're doing. But it is a bit scary. Right, so if I turn this over, you can start to see what's happening. And little bits of text, I don't worry about it. Like, we're, we're junk journalists. Don't worry about a little bit of the label showing through because it's only a little bit and it's not readable as to what it is unless you recognise the label. And I don't think I would. It actually is set the end of the word praline. I don't think I would put that together, even like, after a wee bit, I still don't think I would. 
work out that that's what it said originally. Right, so that's going to cover those bits. So take this too. And you're just basically piecing together little bits. So one wrapper I have found is enough for one tag. And I just think it's a super pretty effect to get these little shiny pops of colour through the dark tag. You know, how often do we use black or dark grey or even brown in our ephemera? They're not colours we typically go to, is it? Unless you're going for a vintage feel and then you'll go for a brown shade or tone. Or grungy, you might use black. Alright, so again, I'm just going to trim off around where it's not stuck down. Just not completely, just enough to remove any huge amount of excess. Okay, so I'm not even going to use a whole one here for this one. It's quite a big wrapper, this one. Come off that. And the little tiny scraps I am throwing away because, you know, you've got to, got to draw a line somewhere with what you keep. Or at least I need to start drawing a line on what I keep. Poor hubby. He's very, very long-suffering in me and my crafty supplies. But he also gets at it as well. I talked um, last week, I think, about an upcoming book sale that I wanted to go to and you know that I would go and look for this book novel that I want to read that I haven't been able to find and that would be my excuse for going to the book sale well I've kind of gone and shot myself in the foot literally <laughs> not not literally you know what I'm trying to say I hope um, and that last week I actually found the book at a secondhand store and purchased it so I've no longer got that excuse and I started reading the book and it's so good so good and hubby was like well now you're going to have to make time to read it and I was like yes um, so when he was in at the dentist having his tooth extracted I started reading it and I got 11 pages read and so enjoying it it's kind of better than what I was anticipating um yeah, it's, it's actually more humorous than what I was expecting. So that's quite fun. Um, so yeah, so that's really good. Uh, the book I'm talking about is Cross Stitch, um, otherwise called Outlander. That's the first one in the series. And yeah, just really enjoying it so far. haven't read any more since Thursday when I started reading it. And I actually left it in the car and grabbed it out of the car yesterday. Um, so it's very hard to read a book when it's actually in the glove box in your car. But there you go. Maybe I'll find some time today to have a wee read. Right, so let's get back to this project. So I've now stuck down all my foil and can you see how pretty that is? And this sparkles through that dark, it's almost a black, it's called Mere Island. And the text on the, like the colour swatch and the number doesn't worry me just leaving that ignoring it um, so I've stuck down the foil now I've put some more double-sided tape over top of that and I'm going to take the backing off that and then we're going to put some glue in just for that double insurance of it holding all together now, if you aren't going to use another tag to put on the back, then whatever you do put on the back, make sure it's thick enough so that when somebody's writing on it, uh, their pen doesn't go into the holes that you've punched here, and that could break through. Uh, if you're using foil it's prob prob like this, it's probably less likely to cause a problem um, because it's a bit tougher. But if you're just using like tissue paper, then a pen could e ballpoint pen could easily sort of break through to the other side and ruin the look of the tag so just bear that in mind right now I'm going to add some 
tacky glue uh, if it comes out come on glue you were going fine for me half an hour ago there we go so i'm just going to randomly sort of smush some around particularly in the areas that don't have any tape but also on top of the tape which just gives a little bit of wiggle room for when you put the things together if you don't put it down completely aligned first time the glue will just allow you to move it a bit whereas the, the double-sided tape won't it's going to grab and it's going to grab straight away so just a little bit of a barrier between the tape and the and your other half right so i'm going to line it up from the bottom and i did discover these are not all identical these paint chips even though they came from the same stack they are slightly off at the top so yeah I'm just going to smush that down but it's fine i'm just going to a little bit of glue here come in and round off the bits that show at the top where and it's at the top that i've found it doesn't really quite line up properly i'm just going to trim off the white that's showing Yours might line up perfectly and you can avoid this step. Or you can just ink it if you prefer. Okay, so this is our writing side. So that's why I've gone with a lighter one that you can write on. Oh, blowfly just flew in. Yuck. Right, so it also doesn't line up properly in the hole there. But I'm not super worried about that. I'm just going to put a hole reinforcer. You can still see the white. Um, you could come in with, I've got these inked with a uh, vintage photo, so I could come in there and just give it a little bit of a, a brush and that kind of hides it a little bit. So I'll do this side at the same time. Just dulls down that white a bit. So whole reinforces in. okay so from here this is where we come to our stamping and i want torn bits of paper so i want torn on all edges so i'm going to go ahead and tear this bit of paper i don't imagine i'll need any more than this one bit of paper thinking gosh I'm getting hungry that's ridiculous but then I look at the time and it's quarter past 11 so not that ridiculous lunch will be here before we know it I probably actually need a drink I tend to feel hungry if I need more fluid oh, that stupid blowfly is going to drive me bananas I hate blowflies so noisy and annoying and gross. I've got the bedroom windows open so they come in the bedroom windows and just fly down this end and then can't find their way back to out the window. Just got a little excess on this side there. I'm just going to trim off as well. Okay, so I'm going to... didn't grab out my stamp stuff. So stamp pad and a block and let's go with wisdom because it's the first one i picked up these aren't great stamps but they're still quite fun to use wisdom and i think i'm going to do one at a time oops i want three little words you can do it differently of course you can use words or not words you could use labels instead you could just put one word on no words you know just you do you but i quite like this i'm just being careful because i don't want to smudge the ink so 
So this one I am going to pop over here. <clears throat> so this one I want to put here. So I don't want much excess at the side here, but I want a good amount in front of it. And so I'll show you why. So I'm going to grab out a glue page here. Put my word down there. And so this will help blot the ink if it's not dry yet. Oops, I need to wind that up a little bit. That's better. I can actually get to the glue. And no ink come off, so I imagine that's quite dry enough. Which is great. Get this chance of smudging. And I'm going to put that in this gap here. And I'm just going to wrap that little bit around to the back. Now there's a couple of reasons for this. One is that it looks pretty cool. So it adds interest to the back of your tag just with that little bit. And there's going to be three of them. So you'll have three little bits that wrap around. The other reason is, is that because we've got a sandwich of tape and foil or whatever you're using and the two cards... It doesn't like seamlessly fit together as one single piece. If you collaged it, then it would be like flat, but we're putting two cards together with stuff in between. So when we wrap this little bit around the edge, it's kind of saying to whoever gets it that it's not two separate pieces. You know, if you sit there and think, oh, there's two bits there. Can I, are they supposed to come apart? And before you know it, it's wrecked because somebody's tried to pull it apart. I'm just kind of thinking ahead as to what possibly might happen. By doing that little wrap around, we get that little bit of interest, but it also cements it as a single piece. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So let's do two more words. So um, I'm going to do one down the bottom, so I want a bit of space under the bottom of the word. Let's go with... Courage. And if you don't have um, stamps, then maybe you've got a typewriter. These are about the size of a normal typewriter font. Or you could print some out, you know, onto fun. Oh, what am I doing with scissors? I don't want scissors. Um, so many ways you could modify this to your preference. And I don't want a lot at the beginning and start of our word. Because I want it to be under the word. So I'm trimming off a bit before and after. I'll oh, use this glue page since it's right there. Glue stick. I've got so much stuff on my desk I, I'm losing things. And it's right under my nose, quite literally. Okay, so this one's going to go down the bottom. And it is going to partially cover over the name of the paint colour. Which is fine. There. This bottom one also will help it when it's being slid into a pocket. It's going to help it not catch in between the, the layers. When you, you know, um, like putting it into a pocket. It's going to help it slide under instead of like getting caught up between if that makes sense okay where do i want my third word so over here somewhere there's a space up here we could perhaps put it on that side as well and have two on that side mm. or maybe in here i think i'll go in here because i don't like the idea of two on that side i want because I want something to seal this side. So let's go with strength. Because I think that kind of goes with wisdom and courage. So we'll use strength. Oops, got a little corner of the stamp there. Which is part of the problem with these stamps. They're a bit curly on the edges. Tend to stick into the ink pad I was given them so I don't know what brand they are or where they came from originally it came from a lady who was de-stashing because she was moving and I'm just going to trim 
make it down a bit more because this gap's a bit narrower. And I can probably put that little ink mark right on the edge where I wrap it around. Go, wrap that around. So there's our tag. Oh, I haven't done the fabric. I was going to say there's our tag, but we haven't quite finished yet. Right, so let's grab a bit of this fabric. I'm not even worried about colours in terms of the fabric matching my chocolate wrappers. Um, it's eclectic, it's junky, it's trashy, because after all, it is Trash Craft Tuesday. So it's all fair game in my book. I'm just going to cut past that bit because I don't think it would tear successfully. There we go. And that's longer than what I need, so I can probably get two out of that strip. Two tags. So let's just cut that in half. And I'm just going to poke it through our little hole at the top. And tie it off. Just one tie is enough. Doesn't need any more than one tie because the fabric will grip itself. Whoops, I probably actually could have done with a bit longer piece. But that's alright. That's still cute. Like that's actually really cute. Yeah, and a bit of fraying, tease that out a bit, you know, make it, it's not wanting to tease out anymore, but this bit is, so I can work at that off camera anyway, but isn't that super cute? It's sparkly, it's trashy, it's eclectic, it's fun. And a fun tag to go in a journal with writing space on the back. And there you can see the, the little wraparounds of the paper. Just to add a little something. Okay. Now, I did say I was going to do one with circles. So let's do that. Right. So let's choose out another couple of tags. Um, some of these are more distressed than others and that's okay and do we want to go that's more brownie color and this is a brownie black okay circles so I don't think I'll go for my big circle um, I think I'll just stick with my one inch and my whatever this is half inch Yeah, half inch. So my half inch and my one inch I will do. So, so we're going to have some fun circles that we can use for something. So I'm just going to go three of each, I think. Three being a really good number. Or maybe I might do five of the small. I don't know. I don't know. Just make it up as you go along. Whatever looks good to you. Yeah, I think I'll do some more. Just because leaving room for the words. So I can put a word here, a word here, and a word down the bottom. Just... There might be just enough room at the bottom. I didn't leave a lot of space there. Um, got four. Put another one up there. There. Okay, so just circles. Um, I was thinking, do you want me to do it in something other than the chocolate wrappers to see a difference? But I've got the raw chocolate wrappers in front of me, so I'm just going to work with those. Um, how would the purple look? The purple's quite fun. Or here's a roses wrapper. Oh, 
oops, and there's chocolate residue inside that one. That needs a clean. I, I really like this colour. This colour's pretty. Okay, let's give it a clean because it's definitely chocolatey. I've got a couple of these, so if we need more than one, which I suspect we might do. Um, let's just check this one for cleanly. This one's not as bad. A little bit, but we'll just give it a clean at the same time in case we need both. You could even use different colours, guys. You could mix and match. You could really go to town and have fun with it. You know, if you've only got a scrap of one colour, just use a scrap of one colour and something else. Or some things else. Right, just going to give this rub it on my trousers to give it a wee dry and this one so that it sticks with our adhesive okay let's do the same process so a little bit trickier doing the circles in terms of the circles did I say that the tape because of the circles am I even making sense anymore I don't know So just put strips around, It's it'll stop it gaping, it'll help it adhere, it's not super critical to get in all the gaps or anything, just here and there is all good. So just basically doing a square sort of design around the circles where there's room there's not always room oh that fly Ugh. who else hates them do they bug you like they bug me I've been in people's places where they just ignore flies, like, I wish I had the ability to ignore them because they just really bug me, I hate them. Um, noisy, dirty, yucky. And it's like, you're sitting there and there's like a dozen flies circling around in the middle of your room. Like, how can you not be bugged by that? It's just, and that's the problem. You open windows or doors and just the flies come in. It's just gross. Anyway, I am complaining a bit, aren't I? Moaning. I, I do apologise. It's just a stupid blowfly is buzzing around the room. Surprised it hasn't actually come right over to me because it normally they're attracted by the lights, which I've you know got all around me for the filming. So I'm surprised it hasn't come to visit and thankful that it hasn't. Right, so I've surrounded all my circles roughly with tape. I'm gonna peel off the backing on some of them. I'm not going to do all at once like I did with the butterflies. I'm just going to do some here and there. Or, you know, a batch. Come on, tape. Come on. So you probably would have noticed that I didn't put any glue down when I put the foil down. And that's because I don't think it's necessary. Um, the glue that we put on before we put our backing on gets the gaps in between. So, yeah, that's why I don't put glue down on the first layer. And I'm not so worried about it grabbing without being movable because I don't want my foil to really move and probably is peelable, you know, because it's foil, you probably can peel it up. Uh, Right, I don't think I want that purple strip in there. So 
I'm going to trim that off just so I don't end up with any of it in there. And let's put this down. Now I might have some, yeah, I've got roses across there and it says thank you. Which is fine. Fine by me. Having the words thank you and even the words roses like, so making sure to trim it away from our tag hole. We don't want it covering our tag hole. Um, the word roses, you know, how perfect would that be for a rose journal? Or a nature journal even. Or maybe you're making a food one and, I don't know, are roses chocolates, are they everywhere or is that a New Zealand thing? I don't even know. So if, you, if it is a New Zealand thing, roses are a brand of chocolates here, come in a box, assorted flavours. Um, just in case they aren't a worldwide thing, like I assume they were. I don't know why I assumed that. Just because I guess they've been around for decades since I was a kid. They're not as good as they used to be though. They've changed recipes and they've changed the chocolate recipe. And um, they removed some of the best flavours and then people didn't like that. So they bought them back again. But they're not quite the same. And um, yeah, so I've covered over a bit of the tape at the top of that hole. So I'm putting a new bit in there. can occasionally hear helicopters flying around so they must be coming and going getting water or something there's five of them out fighting this fire that's north of where I am I haven't seen a recent update as to whether it's under control or not but it wasn't wasn't overnight they battled it all night and it wasn't under control this morning so yeah not good. So hubby's back to work today after having his tooth extracted last week. So he's doing pretty well. He hasn't got a lot of pain anymore. He's just back to his normal regime of painkillers. Um, he was pretty wiped out though over the weekend. He was very, very tired and did a lot of sleeping. And I think that's just a combination of the anaesthetic and the trauma, because it's quite a trauma, have a thing yanked out of your body. Um, not that I've ever been through it, thankfully, and long may that continue. Um, is it going to be big enough? There's actually holes in there, so I'm going to go with this bit. Again, I'm going to cut off the purple. So yeah, so he did a lot of sleeping over the weekend, um, which is fine. And on Friday, because he had it out on Thursday, so... He didn't go to work on Friday, which I think was a good call. So I'm going to do this in smaller amounts rather than cover it all with one big piece. Because while I don't mind the roses, thank you, in this hole, I don't know that I want it twice. So I'm going to try and avoid getting that so I might do a little bit of tricky tricky aligning here you can get just the top of the thank you yep. yeah so I'm pleased that he's feeling a lot better so it's not nice when someone you love is in pain I mean, goodness, he's lived long enough with me being in pain, and it's really nice that I'm not having the same pain levels anymore, but, you know, I know too well what it's like to be in pain, so when he's in pain, it's not enjoyable. Right, I think that's all good. Yep, and the, ro the roses and thank you are upside down. I'm not worried at all. Fine. but if something like that would bother you then do think about that before you commit to your placement 
Okay, so next step, let's go in with our tape. So I'm getting it as close to the edge as reasonably practical, just to help seal the two pieces together. And I'm using quite a thin, narrow tape because it's easier to get in between the pieces. Uh, the, the cutouts is what I mean, in between the cutouts if you're using a thin tape. But if you don't have a thin tape, then you can use whatever tape you've got and just cut it to size, cut it lengthways to make it a bit thinner. Right, and just for good measure, some down the middle. This tape was a lovely gift from my friend Lisa over in Australia, which I'm very, very grateful for. Thank you, Lisa. Stupid fly. Can you think what I might be doing as soon as I've finished recording this video? Can you take a guess? I'll give you a wee hint. It has something to do with the word eradication. Mm-hmm. Fly herding. Back out a window or a door, wherever they happen to be closest to. That's what I'll be up to when I push stop on the recording. Right, now our glue. If you're happy to go with the just the double-sided tape, then go for it. This is just my personal preference, what I like to do. added insurance that it's all going to stick together as well right. yeah bit of insurance on your ephemera it's not a bad thing sometimes I don't want it falling apart when a person receives their journal and oh it's cool but that's come apart and that's torn and that's you know not torn in a bad way not a good way or things falling apart it's not the look we go for in our journals right so I didn't quite get that lined up so I'm just going to give it a wee trim the edge of the cardstock makes it pretty easy to run the edge of your scissors along and do that fine trim Oops, I'm cutting a little bit into the top layer. That's fine. No biggie. No one's going to know. Nothing to see here. Well, there is. I hope you're watching. <laughs> Otherwise, what am I here for? Right, and at the top where it doesn't line up, Quite amazing I imagine these are made by machine and yet they're still not a hundred percent exactly the same it's kind of a bit interesting okay we're good to rock and roll now let's grab our paper here and what words do we want let's go with grace over this way again I've got the edge of the stamp there it's unavoidable with these stamps I just kind of go with it it's like well it's just part of the look so Grace oh I'm going to sneeze I think <coughs> oh excuse me my goodness uh, Serenity Let's go over this way. Slightly different font, this one. So capitals instead of the lowercase, but that's okay. Oh, 
Whenever I sneeze, I need to blow my nose. Please excuse me. It's annoying. Right, and our last word. Um, we've used all my options here. So serenity, grace, and let's go wisdom again. And so this one I think will be down the bottom, so we'll give it space underneath. Right, I bet it's the fly's fault, made me sneeze, and funnily enough seems to have disappeared at the moment, maybe it did find its way back out the window, one can always hope. Grace can go in there, and you probably noticed I haven't distressed anything. Um, apart from around the hole, which reminds me I need to do my hole reinforces and do a little bit of ink around the, the hole. Oops, perhaps if we put it straight might be good. And this also is writable, so even though it pops into the writing surface, you can just write over top of it. Right, so Serenity... That's big enough strip to do another word for something. Okay, so that needs a little bit taken off. Yep, that's good. Yep, sticky. Stick alert. that one and our wisdom at the bottom so it's a very narrow gap so I'm going to have to be right up against the text I think take some of the sides off and yes we can just get that in under there So a very simple project really, um, you know you could just sit, watch a movie or something and play. And then the bonus of having all those cut out shapes out of your paint chips to use um, on other projects I think is fun as well. There we go, that's that, so let's just come in here and need a bit more ink on my brush I think tone down that white a bit and our whole reinforces so you could color your whole reinforces however you like I'm just going with the ones I've already got coloured with Vintage Photo. Because they go with the neutral colour palette of the paint chips. And then we've just got those wonderful pops of colour. So where did I put my wee strip? Here it is. So we'll tie this in the top. I have the thread sticking to my gluey fingers. made them slightly longer but I still think they look incredibly cute being quite short just makes it a little bit harder to tie but still doable like I mean how adorable is that with that little cute little bit of fabric okay so this is the one we just made with its cool bluey tealy color 
foil and that's the back and we've got this one which is the first one we made with the butterflies and the back and then this is the one I made earlier on see it's got a bit bigger fabric at the top and it's wider as well um, and I did this one with gold and brown foil and the back of that one so there we go I hope you enjoy this idea I hope you give it a go remember there's always ways you can make it you can substitute things use what you've got and have some fun have some fun with it and don't you agree that the circle one looks just as cool as the butterflies I think that's really fun and it would be really fun to do them in different colors too I might have to give that a go myself okay guys thanks for watching take care and I'll be back tomorrow with another video until then have a great day bye